Okay, so fr Friday, June 2nd is the review day for A&C. That's a full day, right? It's a full day of school, and then your final is Monday, June 5th. And that's like the only two exams are half. Yep, you guys come in the morning. It's like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, something like that. Um, I do not know the layout of the exam yet. As soon as I get that information from Ms. Ferrier, then I'll make it, and then I'll let you guys know. Like how many for your response, how many multiple choice, that sort of a thing. All right, so tomorrow's quiz. <clears throat> you guys are going to have 10 questions. All right, so write this down. 10, 10 questions. And no calculators. All right, you guys are going to have to no calculators. You'll probably have between 35 and 40 minutes. You're going to have an hour to do this quiz. So make sure you guys are moving a little quicker. You know, know what to do, when to do it, that sort of thing. So let's just go through this. <clears throat> if we're going to find the distance between the points, remember, this is your X, this is your Y, this is your Z, X, Y, and Z. So follow along with me. 5 minus 1 squared plus negative 3 minus 4 squared plus 3 minus negative 3 squared. Is that all right? Got my signs right and all that? You guys with me? Okay, thank you. So, 4 minus 1, I mean, sorry, 5 minus 1 is 4 squared. Negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7 squared. And 3 minus a negative 3 is 6 squared, correct? All right. So, 4 squared is 16. <clears throat> what's negative 7 squared? 49. Good. And what's 6 squared? 36. All right. What's 16, 49, and 36? What is it? 101. You guys agree? Everybody agree? All right, so your distance is 101, no, square root of 101. What should we check to see if we can do? Simplify. Check to see if we can simplify. <clears throat> always, always, always check to see if you can simplify. Is anything, is there a perfect square inside of square uh, 101? No. So go ahead and just leave it. All right, same thing here. Find the distance. So you have 5 minus a negative. That's going to give me plus 7, correct? Plus 3 minus a negative is going to give me plus 6 squared. And then negative 4 minus a negative is going to give me plus, correct? You guys okay with me just going through and changing signs like that? <clears throat> You're welcome to do that. So you have 12 squared. Yeah. Plus 9 squared. Yeah? Plus what? Zero squared. Okay. So 144 plus 81 gives you what? 225. What do you guys know about 225? 15. This breaks down to the whole number, 15. <clears throat> so if you have a question that says, hey, find the distance, there you go. Everybody with? All right, midpoint. How do we find the midpoint? How do you find the midpoint? Add the x's, divide by two. two. Add the y's, divide by two. Add the z's, divide by two. So negative seven plus negative six divided by two. Nine plus six divided by two. Three plus six divided by two. Do you guys see how easily I just showed you my work? Do that, don't do it in your head. Negative six and negative seven gives me negative 13 over two. Can that simplify? No, so leave it. 9 and 6 gives me 15 over 2. Does that simplify? No, just leave it. And then <clears throat> I have 9 over 2. If you want to write them as mixed fractions, you're welcome to. Mixed numbers. But if you, if, I mean, you can just leave it like that. Now, if you had 6 over 4, something like this, 6 over 4, yes, we would simplify to 3 over 2. But if it does not simplify anymore, Unless you were to make it into a mixed fraction, just leave it. Questions? Do we have any more midpoints? Um, yeah, let me come over here. Standard form of the equation of a radius. <clears throat> I mean, sorry, given the radius and the center. All right, so think about this, guys. Think about this, think about this, think about this. Everybody looking? All right, you need your center and you need your radius in order to write the equation of the circle. So, wait, did I say circle? I meant sphere. Remember, our equation looks like this. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared 
plus what? Z minus? J. Yep. Squared equals your radius squared. So since we already have the center, we just throw this into the formula. So it's X minus 4 squared plus what? Y plus 9 squared, good, plus Z minus 5 squared. And then what is our R squared? 81. That's for the trace thing. This, they're telling you this is the radius, so your radius squared would be 81. <clears throat> this next question is a little different. How is this a tad bit different? They give you the diameter. If they give you the diameter, think about what that is. That goes through the middle, and it goes from one side to the other. So what is the radius in this problem? Five. Five. Right? Don't make silly mistakes with stuff like that, guys. Read what they give you. So again, you have x minus a negative five. So x plus five squared plus y minus nine squared plus z minus six squared equals what? 25. Perfect. <clears throat> it's a real simple question. Don't complicate it more than it needs to be. All right, completing the square. You absolutely 100,000% will have a completing the square problem. <clears throat> We've completed the square a bunch in this class. The main thing is to keep signs correct and to get your variables together. X is stay with X. So X squared plus 4X plus the box. Go ahead and get it set up. Plus Y squared. Is there anything with a Y? No? Okay. So plus Z squared minus 8Z plus a box. And then what is what happens with 19? We move it over. It becomes what? Negative 19? Okay, perfect. So how many times do we have to complete the square in this problem? In this particular one? Twice. All right, there's nothing to do with the y. y it's, the, it's y plus 0, so just leave it. So you're going to take your b term right here. You're going to say 4 divided by 2, and you get what number? Positive 2. So in my parentheses, I have x minus 2 squared. When I square 2, what does it become? 4. What you do to one side, you add to the other. Good. Now, y squared. I don't have to. There's nothing to complete the square. There's no b term, so you just rewrite y squared. Now we have plus z squared. You take that b term of negative 8. What is negative 8 divided by 2? <clears throat> negative 4. Why did I put a minus sign? No, there's a plus. Sorry. <clears throat> what, what, what goes in my parentheses? Okay, so you have z minus 4 squared. And then when I square negative 4, what does that become? 16, what you add to one side, you add where? To the other. Good. So, guys, what is negative 19 plus 4 plus 16? What is it? 1. Okay. So, there is the first part of this question. Write the equation. There is your equation. What is the center of this sphere? Negative 2, 0, and... Perfect. What is the radius? One. What is the square root of one? One. Don't tell me the radius is the square root of one. <clears throat> Simplify that. What is the square root of one? One. All right, let's do it again. This time I have all the terms. So let's simplify. Let's <clears throat> x squared minus 4x plus the box plus y squared plus 6y plus the box, right? Plus z squared minus 12z plus the box equals negative 45, yeah? Agreed? All right, let's complete the square. So take your b term here with the x. Negative 4 divided by 2 gives me negative 2. So what goes in my parentheses is x minus 2 squared. And then when I square negative 2, what goes here? 4. And then I add 4 on this side. Plus, complete the square again. I'm going to take my 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So my parentheses is y plus 3 squared. When I square 3, I'm going to add 9 to the left side. So I add 9 to the right side. Everybody with? 
All right, so we're gonna do it again. I have plus, I'm gonna take my negative 12 and divide it by two, that gives me negative six. So in my parentheses, I have z minus six squared. Then when I square negative six, I get plus 36 on both sides. So what's negative 45 <clears throat> plus four plus nine plus 36? What does that give me? Negative 45 plus 4 plus 9 plus 36. Um, four. Did you guys get 4? Yeah. Okay, remember, no calculators tomorrow, so write it out. So now if you're going to answer the question, here is your equation in standard form. What is the center? Positive 2, negative 3, positive 6, and what is your radius? Two. Why is it two? Why isn't it plus or minus two? Because distance will be negative. Good. <clears throat> All right. You guys have questions on the first page? Pretty straightforward. All right. Moving along, moving along, moving along. If you're asked to find the component form and then the magnitude, okay, this is important. Don't worry about, we're not going to do, you know, we're not going to do direction. But if you're asked to find component form, the biggest thing that I can remind you guys is it's what minus what? Terminal minus initial, because you're subtracting, the order really matters. So rewrite it. Rewrite the terminal point first, just so you don't mix up the signs. And then your initial, 0, negative 9, 9. <clears throat> so my vector, you combine first with first, second with second, third with third. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 5 minus a negative 9 is 14. And then what's 9 minus 9? 0, okay? Do you guys agree that's your component form? How do we find the magnitude? Well, the magnitude is you take your vector and you just square each piece of it and add it together. So 0 squared plus 14 squared plus 0 squared. Which is going to give me <clears throat> 14 squared is what? 256? No, it's 196. 196. Uh, 16 is 256. So, and then when you simplify that, guys, what is the square root of 196? 14. All right. But the main thing, you guys can all figure this out super easy, but the main thing to remember is it's terminal, terminal minus initial. Super important that you guys remember that, okay? All right. So let's go down to nine. <clears throat> They're asking us to do a bunch of stuff here, right? Before you try and do this all in your head, just write it out. Three times W, where's your W vector? Zero, negative 10, 10, or 10, negative 10. Zero, 10, negative 10. Then I have minus two V, so three, negative two, negative one. And then plus little old U, negative four, four, two. Negative four, four, two. All right, <clears throat> let's distribute first. So I'm going to distribute the 3. So I have 0, 30, negative 30. Everybody agree? I'm going to distribute a negative 2. So I'm going to change that sign here in the middle to a plus. So I have negative 6, 4, and 2. Everybody with me? And then negative 4, 4, and 2. <clears throat> Do we have all of our multiplication out of the way? Yes or no? Do I have to distribute anymore? No. So let's just combine. First with first with first. So 0, negative 6, and negative 4 gives you what? Negative 10. Perfect. So 30 plus 4 plus 4. 38. Great. And then negative 30, 2, and 2. Negative 26. And there is your vector. If I asked you now for the magnitude, what would you do with each three of those numbers? Square, square them, add them together, take the square root. <clears throat> Good. All right, let's do this one up here. Let's do number 10. So 7 times u, so negative 4, 4, and 2, plus v, right, which is 3, negative 2, negative 1, and then minus one fifth W, zero, 10, negative 10. Now tomorrow, you're definitely gonna have a fraction for sure. 
and your question will say, go ahead and combine whatever, but <clears throat> it'll say no decimals. So you're gonna have to leave stuff as fractions. So in this case, guys, let's get our distributing done. So seven and negative four is negative 28. Seven and four is positive 28. And seven times four is 14. Plus, nothing's happening here. So three, negative two, negative one, whoops. And then I'm gonna put a plus and I'm gonna distribute a negative one fifth. When you divide by negative, I'm sorry, when you multiply by negative one fifth, you're really dividing by what? By negative five? Okay, so this is zero. What's 10 times negative one fifth? What's 10 divided by negative five? Negative two. What's negative 10 divided by negative five? Positive two. So now that we have all of our <clears throat> distributing done. We don't have anything else to do other than to combine. We're going to add. So we're just going to combine first with first with first. What's negative 28 plus three plus zero? Negative 25. What's 28 minus two minus two? 24. And then what's 14 minus one plus two? 15. Questions? Anybody have questions? Okay, I'm going to do, we can do these all, we got time. Magnitude, all you're doing is taking each piece of your vector, you square it, and add it together underneath the square root. Should you ever get a negative answer for any of these magnitudes? No. You're squaring a number. When you square a negative, it becomes positive. So negative 8 squared is 64, plus 3 squared is 9, plus 36. Guys, what's 64 plus 36? 100 plus 9 is? 109, good. So now you're like, okay, 109, does that break down? Well, let's think about it. 109, does 2 go into 109? No, just 3. If you look at it, what's 9 plus 1? 10, so no. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. No? So we're good. If it breaks down, you need to break it down. Again, magnitude, negative 7 squared plus 0 squared plus 5 squared. Negative 7 squared is 49 plus 0 squared is 0 plus 25. What's 49 and 25? 74. 74. Square root of 74. Does that break down? Well, 74. What's 74 divided by 2? 3. What's 74 divided by 2? Mm-hmm. Does anything go into 37? No. Nope. So just leave it. If it breaks down, break it down. <clears throat> Do you guys have any questions? Okay, let's talk about dot product. I'm not going to do both of these because I want to conserve for time. So you guys want to do 13 or 14? 13. 13. Okay, it's the same exact problem. Dot product. First of all, it's going to say find the dot product, and then it'll be written like this, U dot V. <coughs> What that means is first times first. So eight times two plus second times second. So eight times negative seven plus third times third. So negative two times negative eight. What's eight times two? 16 plus what's eight and negative seven? Negative 56. Plus, what's negative 2 and negative 8? 16. No, so now we add, guys. What's 16 <clears throat> minus 56 plus 16? What is it? Negative 24. negative 24. Remember, your dot product is a singular value. It will not be... A vector. When it asks for the dot product, it's a singular value. Questions? Let's come down to this one. All right. Before you go and look at this, guys, what this is just written a different way. What is vector u? If I was going to use just numbers, what is vector u? 7, 8, negative 4, correct? What is v? 4, negative 1, 5. What if there was no j? What would you put? Zero. Good. 
So to find the dot product, remember it's first with first. So seven times four plus second with second, eight times negative one plus third with third, negative four times five. So 28 plus a negative eight plus a negative 20. If you guys want to write minus, that's fine. I'm just showing you. So it's 28 minus eight. 20, and then 20 minus 20 is zero. Is that something special? They are orthogonal. If you find the dot product to be zero, your vectors are orthogonal. That means they meet at what? A 90 degree angle. All right, so in a question like this, are they orthogonal? Let's do 16. Well, let's figure out the vector first. Vector u is 5 fourths, that <clears throat> negative 1 half, and then 2, correct? Vector v is 4, 14, and 1. Everybody with me? So if these two are orthogonal, their dot product equals 0. So 5 fourths times 4 over 1 plus negative 1 half times 14 plus 2 times 1. When you guys multiply 5 fourths times 4 over 1, what do you get? 5 plus, what's negative 1 half times 14? Negative 7, good. Plus 2 times 1 is 2. What's 5 minus 7? Negative 2 plus 2 equals what? 0. So your answer to this question, this question right here, right here your answer was 0 because the question asks what is the dot product? This question, what is your answer? Yes. yes. Orthogonal. How did you prove to me that they're orthogonal? Because the dot product is zero. Do you guys understand the difference in answering those two questions? Yeah? All right, do I need to do 17? Well, let's do it, whatever. What's my vector? <laughs> Six, negative nine, and three, correct? And then this one is negative one, negative one, negative one. Dot product, six times negative one plus negative nine times negative one plus three times negative one. What's six times negative one? Negative six plus nine minus three. What's negative six plus nine? Three minus three, my answer is zero. So yes or no? Yes. Are they always gonna be orthogonal? No. All right, last two types of questions. <clears throat> let's do this one. In the XZ plane, let's find the trace. It'll say find the trace of, what does that mean? If they want the trace of in the XZ plane, what are they telling you? Put a zero for whatever number or whatever letter they don't mention. What letter do they not mention? Y. So you have X squared plus zero minus four squared plus Z minus three squared equals 144. Now you just simplify guys. You wanna get your letters on one side, numbers on the other. So this is gonna become X squared plus, what's zero minus four? Negative, negative four and negative four squared is 16 plus z minus three squared equals 144. What's the next thing I need to do? I need to subtract the 16 from both sides. So I have x squared plus z minus three squared equals, what's 144 minus 16? One forty four minus minus sixteen. One twenty eight. Okay. What's one more thing I need to do here? Do you see how this has a squared on it? This has a squared on it. When we write our trace, what should the radius have on it? A squared. So we, how could I write that? Well, let's break it down. 128. Two goes into 128. How many times? 64. What's another way I could write 128? 
right? Because 128 is the same as the square root of 64 times 2. So this would be 8 square root of 2. So you guys could write this as x squared plus z minus, whoops, forgot the minus sign, minus 3 squared equals 8 square root of 2 what? Perfect. Good. Very good. You just break it down like you would any other time you have a radius, right? You always check to see if you can break it down, and that's how we'd write it. But any time they ask for the trace, they'll give you two letters. Whatever letter they don't mention, that's the one you plug in for zero. They're going to move to the other side. You understand that? All right, this is one question that I actually wasn't going to go over. I said, I'm not going to go over it. I'm just going to put it on the quiz. And then I thought, meh, it's the end of the year. I got all my little babies because all the big kids moved on. So we'll talk about it. Let's look, read what this says. The initial point of the vector, B, is this. What's the terminal point? So think about this. To find the vector component, you say terminal minus initial equals the vector, correct? How would you guys figure out <clears throat> one of the points? How would you figure this out? What would you do with the information that's given? What do you know? Like, we, we just wrote that little equation because we know it. So what do you know? What could you fill in? We know the initial point, but we don't know the terminal point. We know the initial point is what? 3, negative 1, 6. And we know the component form is 4, 2, and negative 1, correct? Could we work backwards, guys? This is a basic problem-solving skills question. This is not anything crazy mathematic. What would you have to, what, how would you, what would you have to take away? Right here, what would this point be? What would this point be? What would this point be? And what would this point be? In order for you to get four as an X value, what minus three would give you four? Seven. Okay. What minus a negative one would give you two? Three. Okay. And then what minus six would give you negative one? Okay. Now, look, I like, guys, all you were doing there was thinking. All right. So this is what we came up with. How could we see if we were right? Let's just plug it in. Let's just try. Let's just try with what we just found. We said 7, 3, and 5 minus, what was the original initial? 3, negative 1, and 6. Does that equal our vector form? Let's look. 7 minus 3 is 4. Is that what we were looking for? Yes. 3 minus a negative 1. Does that give me 2? Yes or no? No. So was that one what we were looking for? No? Okay, no big deal. So let's think about it. What should that be? What minus a negative one will give me two? What if I, have, I, put, if I put a one here? One minus negative one. Does that give me two? It sure does. And then what's five minus six? Is that a negative one? Yes or no, guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so perfect. So here would be your answer. Now, if you think of that another way, if you have a little formula you want to make in your mind, great. I just wanted to see if you guys could figure this out. You can figure this problem out with basic, simple problem-solving skills, exactly like we just did. We said 7, 3, and 5. And we plugged in and we're like, oh, wait a second, that 3, 1 didn't work. What could I do? What one minus a negative one would give me two? There you go. Does that make sense? Just work backwards. That's all that problem is. We weren't even going to go over it. But then so many hands would go up and be like, can you help me with this? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> all right, questions. Anybody else have any preguntas? All right, guys, we are done. So.